going on, Print Fam? Today is going to be a talking head sort of video, where I'm just standing in front of this camera talking. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about credit and how you can go about fixing it with Cam's Quick Tip Credit Fixes. Sounded pretty good. Let's run with that. If you've decided that you're gonna play around in the current financial established system that the majority of us are playing in, then you gotta have a few things lined out. And that's what I'm gonna talk about with you today. Starting with number one, download the app Credit Karma on your phone, sign up, and start using it. The reason that I endorse Credit Karma so often to everybody I know is because it gamifies what is a, what is ultimately just a boring monotonous thing, which is paying off old bills uh, and keeping track of your credit score. Credit Karma makes it really easy to look. Uh, granted, their scores are inflated by about 10 points, 10 to 15 points higher than your actual score is, but it gives you a general idea of where you stand. Uh, and it's kind of fun to, you know, track when your score goes up a few points and then it drops and you can see why it drops. Uh, it's just a really fun, interactive way to keep track of your credit and start getting serious. Number two, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. It's not a trick, there is no secret, uh, but it's in regards to student loans. If you got them, I'm sorry that you went that route, but you're stuck with them. And th there's one little thing that you could possibly do to defer paying it. Uh, even if you went to university and you're done, but you're not ready to start making payments, in some cases you can actually take a semester at a community college uh, and avoid having to start repayment on those loans. If that's not something you wanna do, then you just need to start repaying them. If you don't start repaying them when you're supposed to, here comes the penalties and the repayment plans with penalties and all the things that go along with uh, not living up to your obligation, which is paying those things back. There's, there's no secret to it, but you can do payments based on your current income level. So if you have a really low income, you can pay very low payments, but you're not paying down the principal, and a lot of the times you're not even paying the full amount of interest. But I have heard stories of many, many people that have just decided to live with the student loan for the rest of their life and just always pay the minimum based on whatever their income is. So, uh... It's an option, but it's a shitty option. Last thing I'll say about student about student loans is the way you acquire them, which is college. Uh, if you're a youngster and you haven't gone to college yet, you haven't put yourself in this situation, consider all your options. Uh, I'm tempted to, to express my opinions on the nature of college and stuff like that, but I'm not going to. What I will tell you is uh, it's an institution that is somewhat antiquated in 2018. That's as far as I'm gonna go with it. If you wanna be a doctor, you gotta go to school. If you wanna be a lawyer, you gotta go to school. If those are something you wanna do, of course. Any of the general studies, business degree, design degree, all that kind of shit, avoid university, avoid trade schools, look into your community college, get the education for cheap, uh, and avoid a lifetime of servitude to the goddamn banks that own those student loans. Cause you're their slave. Avoid it at all costs. Moving on, I could talk about this shit for hours. We're moving on. Credit fix tip number three. Focus on building new good credit. Old debts, even when paid, are still gonna affect negatively until they fall off, but new lines of credit uh, affect your score positively. So spend your time and energy acquiring new lines of credit and your score will go up, 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 up. Uh, fix tip number four. Credit Karma is an incredible resource. In my experience, when it came to just trying to apply directly with your banks or with the different credit card companies, I would get denied almost every time. Fast forward to Credit Karma, I start using that and it shows you your approval odds. You, you apply to the cards that have the highest approval odds and it just seems like you never get denied. Ah, number five. is to keep your inquiries low. The lower or less inquiries you have, the better your standing credit score will be. This is where I use Credit Karma, uh, and I don't apply for anything unless it says my approval odds are good or great. If you can't get the approval odds to good or great, just don't apply until those odds get there. 
Sometimes it can take months, sometimes it could take a year, but just keep doing your thing, eventually your odds will go up, then you apply. Keep those inquiries low, people. Uh, number six. In my opinion, that credit where you're starting to go from okay to good is when you start acquiring multiple lines of credit and getting your total credit allowance up into the $10,000, $20,000 range but you carry a 0% balance across the board, which means you spend on those lines of credit, but you pay them off every month. That's getting you into that good category. The next stage is the age of those lines of credit. As you go from a credit card, a line of credit being a year old, to two years old, to five years old, that's when you start going from good credit into that excellent credit category. Just to elaborate on that, essentially the bureaus wanna see that you are responsible enough to have a shitload of money or credit, not money, at your disposal and that you have the self-control not to spend it. That's all they want to see. And the longer that you can display that self-control, you know, the months, the years, the five years, the decades, the more trust they have in you. Numero seven. Oh, I, what is seven in Spanish? Fuck the Joneses. Their life's not as good as it appears. Your neighbors, your best friend, they may have the cars, they have all these things, but they're in debt in most cases. Unless they struck it rich and they had the cash to pay for all of these things out of pocket, in most cases they're financing it, which means they are uh, prisoners of these toys that they financed. A better way to live, in my personal opinion, is Spartan, especially in the sense of credit. You can buy things, you can buy toys, you can have all the fun little things, but only if you could pay cash for them. Number eight. Oh, happy day. Your coworker or your best friend or your significant other just got a new car. Isn't it awesome? I bet you want one too, don't you? I understand. We've all been there. A better alternative and a more minimalist way of thinking is to just buy older, used Japanese cars and trucks. The benefits to these vehicles are endless, but the most important ones are the facts that the parts are cheap, they're plentiful, and pretty much even a, girl, even a backyard mechanic can work on them and repair them. Uh, so it's really a win-win, and uh, the new cars have all the bells and the whistles, but the old Japanese cars and trucks are just as reliable as anything you can get new, for the most part. There's always those lemons out there, but you see where I'm going with this. You don't need new and shiny to be happy. Number nine, your rent should never exceed one week of your total monthly salary. Period, period, fucking period. In some cases this means you got a roommate up because your total rent should not exceed one, rent or mortgage, I'm sorry, your rent or your mortgage should not exceed one week salary. Sit. Sit, sit. And if you look at your current situation, you might just be in the wrong neighborhood. You might just be in the wrong house. You might just be in the wrong situation all the way around. Start evaluating how you can get into the thing that I just told you about. Uh, and even if it's a step down, appears to be a step down, in most cases it's actually a step up in the right direction. I promise you this. I live my life this way. And financially, I just, I don't have, I don't worry. 10. Uh, the last tip that I have today is in regards to your toys. Now, toys are fine, but you should not acquire toys unless you have the goddamn cash to pay for them. Enough said, right? D does it, do I need to explain further? Because I will. This is just acquiring more debt. This is you paying more for something because you want it now, and you probably shouldn't have had it in the first place because you didn't have the cash to pay for it. That's it. The whole institution of credit is insane, but if you're in society today, you are a part of that system and you can play the game. But really, you play the game best when you have an incredible credit score by doing the things that I just talked about, but you stay out of the control of the system by not letting yourself get trapped by one of those institutions. Take a second and say, these are just my opinions and who the fuck am I to tell you what to do? Okay, and that's a wrap on the uh, how to fix your credit video. Hopefully there was some useful information in there for you. 
Uh, if you have any questions or if you would like me to dive into greater detail about a particular subject in regards to this sort of thing, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make a video about it. Other than that, uh, keep watching, keep liking, keep subscribing, and keep sharing the shit out of this content, print fam. We will talk to you next time. That's a uh, big piece out.